Prusa Slicer 2.8 is out, and there's a couple of new things we should look at, so let's look at them. This video is sponsored by PCBWay, more about that later on. The thing that will jump out to you straight away if I show you Prusa Slicer 2.7 compared to 2.8 is that they've changed the UI a bit. UI of course meaning user interface. Where there was an operating system menu at the top before, there's now instead a menu button with a logo on it, and the tabs have turned into other buttons next to that. I quite like it personally, but I am aware that it does stop the alt shortcuts from working. If you've ever used these, um, I'm talking specifically about Windows, it's probably similar in other operating systems. If you press the alt key, it very subtly highlights the menu, and you can then either use the arrow keys or the corresponding key buttons that are underlined. But of course, Prusa Slicer does have its own comprehensive set of shortcuts that you can learn instead. I think just about everything has its own shortcut that doesn't rely on the menu. And if you want to know what those are, you can get them on a t-shirt. Yeah. So basically all the things with arrows on, these are new in the user interface. I did read somewhere that this is the first phase of a greater overhaul, so I'm quite interested to see where that goes. But anyway, the main feature I wanted to show you is this one. What you see here with these colors is a somewhat approximation of the actual speed that the printer is moving at. To access this particular mode, you have to slice something, and then from the slicer preview, which by the way, it does go there automatically after you press the slice button, but if you want to switch between the two, you can use the tab key, which is something I discovered by accident while I was messing with the aforementioned menu stuff. You need to select actual speed on the preview screen from the drop down here. This is new and it's quite different compared to the old speed preview, as you can see. The old speed preview is still available in the drop down. So what do we mean by actual speed? Well, let me show you. As the printer does its print moves, it's easy to assume that it goes from speed 0 to speed, say, 100 millimeters per second instantaneously. The thing is, if you watch a printer, it kind of looks like it does do that, but it can't physically do instantaneous speed changes. There's a thing called physics that gets in the way. When you have G-code that says, for example, move this amount and do it at this speed, there's another variable you aren't seeing. So the extra variable that we aren't seeing in the old preview was, of course, acceleration. And that's what's shown now. And while acceleration has been used in slicer time estimate calculations for a while, obviously, otherwise they'd be massively out, they were never shown in the preview before. And this is the cool part if the colour changes weren't already cool enough. If you click down here at the bottom, it will reveal another new UI element which is showing you the actual time to speed graph. The sloped section here is acceleration, it's the first derivative of speed. The flat section is constant speed and then deceleration which is just acceleration negative. This is also reflected in the grid next to it with numerical values if you, if you want those. In real life as we mentioned this happens so quickly that you generally can't see it on a printer, but if I slow down the acceleration a bit on the Prusa, then you can hear it. The pitch is changing in line with the speed, so you're actually hearing the acceleration there. Of course you can also film at 300 fps and then slow down to 12 times slower than real life. It's still hard to see acceleration without some kind of analysis, counting the frames and the movement.
Some printers do accept acceleration commands from the slicer and some don't. I think the majority do these days. If yours is on the don't list, then if you want the preview and the times to be remotely accurate, then you'll need to make sure you fill the settings in correctly manually. Also, I noticed that while jerk does seem to have an effect on the speeds, uh, it is jerk on the Prusa, and the colors do change if you change the jerk, it doesn't show on the graph. I don't really want to get into the whole jerk isn't jerk thing again, if you know, you know. But there's now square corner velocity uh, in Clipper instead of jerk, and this is all the reason I'm not explaining what these things mean, it's kind of beyond the scope. Suffice it to say that these corners on the graph would be rounded in reality because you also can't have an instantaneous change in acceleration either. Clearly the decision not to represent jerk or change in acceleration with respect to time is a decision that Prusa have made. Honestly, I can't say I blame them. So why? What what does this actually do? What does knowing this and seeing this preview and being able to access these graphs, what, what what's the point? Well, one of the cool things that it will do potentially is show you a common artifact that maybe we don't realize is down to these real world speed changes or maybe haven't thought about it to, to that extent. You might have noticed that printing fast can cause a matte finish in some filaments, especially PETG or um, darker colored PLAs. So this is why it can make these weird patterns and now you can see that these match up to the preview. Otherwise I guess it's probably just some kind of nerdy stat for hardcore users to look at. I can see why I will use it because I tend to meddle around in the minutiae of slices so this will be invaluable for me. If you have any good thoughts on what it might help with for you then put them in the comments. If you're into printing and electronics, then there's a good chance that you'll at some point need to design something that uses some kind of electronic circuit. You can of course build it on a breadboard, but you'll probably want it to be a bit more permanent and professional, and also take up less space. This is where you'd consider designing a PCB. Designing a PCB is not as hard as it looks, there's a few things to learn, but you can typically pick up the basics in a few hours, so it's not really something to be overly afraid of. Once you have your PCB design, then this is where PCB Way can help you make that into an actual physical PCB. All you need to do is export the relevant files from your PCB software and upload them to the PCBWay site and choose the options you need. PCBWay can also create PCBs with advanced features once you get better at designing and they can also create fully assembled and populated PCBs too, as well as flexible PCBs and even if you want to you can have an aluminium core in the centre to use the whole PCB as a heatsink. They of course also offer many other services such as 3D printing including SLS and metal and they can also offer CNC, sheet metal, and even injection molding. Check out the PCBWay website in the links below and see how easy it is to order your first PCB or part. There's also a coupon down there too. Thank you PCBWay as always for sponsoring this video. This new bar structure here has been redesigned visually and I quite like it. The plus button for filament change is a lot easier to hit now. And going back to the bottom bar again, because there's not just the new speed visualizations that we talked about before, you also have a load of other stats here that you can access numerically, like flow rate or speed, which I personally appreciate because I can now see actual numbers here instead of having to guess what the values are at any particular point during the um, print, instead of having to guess from the legend and colour on the preview. Indeed this would have been useful for the last video I did where I was trying to test out flow rates on diamond nozzles and getting out exact numbers was often quite difficult or at least it was until now. The only other new thing that I want to talk about in this release is something that's been in Super Slicer first then Orca Slicer and then rolled back to Bamboo Slicer which is why it might sound familiar. That is the single perimeter on top and bottom. This is a purely cosmetic feature meaning it's supposed to make the top or bottom look nicer. I guess maybe if you use Hilbert Curve Infill. That's it, I think you're up to date and I think I may even have managed to cover both Prusa Slicer 2.7 and 2.8 for a change. If you like this kind of thing then let me know in the comments so I can figure out whether these videos are worth making rather than doing something else. Otherwise I will see you next time, thank you for watching.